Hi, my name's Kayleigh and I'm an arts tutor with South Lanarkshire Leisure and Culture. Today with our acrylics we're going to be painting a still life using vegetables. We've got um, broccoli here which has great textures on it, we've got nice shiny red pepper and our carrots. Um, so we're going to use just a limited palette, not too many colours, look at getting some nice shades and tones in all of our picture, um, including this lovely kind of textured bit on our broccoli here as well. Um, so hopefully from the last couple of weeks of what you've learned you'll be able to transfer that into looking at getting our still life all looking pretty like this. So let's get started. So I've got my still life set up for my acrylic painting today. Last time we did our underpainting, tonal underpainting, which you could start with with this setup as well. Um, it's totally up to you. The paper kind of works the same as the apple did where we've got a lovely shine over the top. Um, which we can get in with our bright whites and we've got some lovely shadows going on in here and in the middle of the broccoli as well. So your tonal underpainting would work really well or you can just go straight in with colour if you like. So I'm going to show you how to do that so that you can, can choose which one you like to do best. We've got, again, we've got this sort of shiny paper. We've got a matte carrot this time um, rather than the banana which has got lots of really, really nice little details on it in here. Um, it's also got a cool shadow right underneath as well. We've got our broccoli, which has got lots and lots of little tiny bits all over the florets, which you might be looking at just now going, how am I going to do that? But I'm going to show you a wee bit of an abstracted way to do it, um, just to get the texture in, but also with the smoothness there. So all I've got today is my pencil, rubber, sheet of acrylic paper. Um, I've got a couple of different size paintbrushes and I've got standard colours, um, so Academium Red, Ultramarine Blue, Sap Green, Burnt Umber, Cadmium Yellow and Titanium White. I've got a water here and a little bit of tissue just to dry my brush and a scrap sheet of paper as well if I do decide what to like try out some colours on as well. Um, so to start off with, I'm just going to draw this out as I see it um, and you can be as kind of wild as you want with your your pencil strokes because your acrylic paint is going to go right over the top. Um, so yeah, get nice sketchy lines in and then we'll go on to paint. So I've got all my paints out ready to start. Like we did with week one, um, we can start this a couple of ways. Well, you could start with your under painting um, like we did last week, or you can start like your bird with your colour blocking, um, just adding in your colours. So that's how I'm going to start this today, is just by adding in the rough colours that everything is. Um, so you can add a little bit of water to your brush while you're painting this on, just to speed up the process, to help the flow of the paint. You're really just getting those main colours in to start off with. Um, you don't have to be too specific about it just yet. We'll put in our highlights and our shadows afterwards. And this cadmium red is a great underpainting colour. It's really, really vibrant, so it's going to make our paper really stand out. And we don't need to mix anything with it just yet, but we can do afterwards. Just wash your brush in between your colours. And then I'm just going to use my sap green for the stock. While we're on our green, um, let's get some green in for the broccoli. So at the moment, I think I'll use just the plain sap green for the main florets 
at the head of the broccoli and then we'll use a slightly lighter green for the stock area. Now that underpainting for the broccoli is going to be really helpful later on. The fact I've used a little bit of water with it, I can still see some pencil marks through which is quite nice actually. So I'm going to mix a slightly lighter green. Um, I'm going to take some green and I'm going to take a little bit of yellow to mix it with. A bit more. probably be lighter than that but this will do just now. Your angle might be a little bit different from mine with the broccoli um, or with all the still life so don't worry if this is slightly off compared to what you've got as long as you're sort of following along. It'll work fine. Um, right, and now let's get a little orange for our carrot. So we're going to take a bit of yellow and a bit of red and just mix all that together. Need a bit more yellow in that, I think. The reds, you don't need too much red when you're trying to mix an orange. That'll do just now. I'll do a wee bit of water to the brush just to make it flow a bit easier. That is a bright orange. <laughs> I'll show you how to dull that down a little bit when we actually come to paint it so it's not quite so vibrant. This will do for our underpainting. And the last thing we're going to colour block in is our background. Um, so it's up to you, you can do your background first. When you're colour blocking, I don't think it really matters too much what, what goes in first. Um, but just before you go into your detail, make sure you have your background colour in. So just mix a little bit of white and a little bit of blue, um, which will do lovely as our background colour. And just take it right up to the edges. Try and not have a glow going on where you've got a white line around the outside of all your vegetables. Now I've done this painting quite big, um, if yours is a lot smaller then you might have some bits that are sort of coming off the page or just take your blue out as far as you'd like to take it. Pulled a bit of orange into there but it's alright, I'll just be able to paint over the top. And you'd be better going over parts of your vegetables than not over them at all. And that blue is slightly darker than the initial blue I put in. But it's fine because it's just an underpainting. Now all the different directions you put your brush strokes in, 
like we did with the tonal underpainting. We'll add texture to your actual final drawing, or final painting even, which I quite like. I, I like all my brush strokes going in different directions and it just gives it a bit of volume. Bit of depth. But if you prefer yours all in same direction, same colours and all that, then do what feels right. So the last little bit up the top here. I'll do just now. Um, the main thing I wanted was just a bit of coverage everywhere. Now let's get into a bit more detail. So I'm going to start my paper, the first, that was the first thing I painted so it's going to be the first thing that's dry. Um, and we want to look at different types of reds that are in our paper. So you can add lots of different colours to change how dark it is, how light it is. Um, if you're wanting to dull down any colour then choose whatever's opposite in the colour wheel. So on the colour wheel, opposite red is a bit of green. So you can always take a little bit of green to add to your red. And it's just going to pull it back a little bit and not be quite as vibrant or quite as bright. So I'm going to mix that together and get that lovely mix. So you can see just a tiny bit of green has taken some of the vibrancy out of that, which as much as our paper is lovely and vibrant, we do have some darker areas. They're just a wee bit duller. So it's not necessarily made it a different shade of red, it's just pulled it back slightly. Um, so I'm going to keep that there as one of my colours I'm going to use. So it's always a good idea to mix up as many colours as you can to start off with so that you've just got them all on hand to sort of dot about um, rather than trying to remix while you're doing it. It can be quite stressful and you want to avoid that. I'm going to do a light red as well. Um, so adding white to red makes it quite pinky. So if you add another wee bit of green as well, it takes some of that insipidness out. I'm a really messy mixer, <laughs> as you can tell, um, and I tend to just put everything all close together. I like all my paints sort of on hand, right close together, whereas you might be a wee bit more particular. We're going to use just white as well. White will be one of our colours that we're putting on there for that big um, bright highlight that's shown over here. There's also a bit of a highlight going down the side and at the edge here as well. Um, so we want to make sure that we've got some of that in. I'm going to take a wee bit of red and do a brown mix as well. Which is going to darken it right down. Now, I'm not using black on my palette. Um, I'm going to try and do it without using black because I think with all these bright colours of fruits and veg, we don't want anything that's too dark. Okay, so I've got bright red here, I've got a lighter red, I've got a muted back red, and I've got a darker red as well. And it's just, they're all on hand to sort of dot about the place. The place I'm going to start is just with this area here. So I'm going to take one section, and to me, I've got a darkness here. I've also got a little reflection of green, actually, from the broccoli, so we'll make sure we get that into. But we're going to go dark around the top here. Um, kind of mid-tones over here and then we get a lot lighter towards this side. So if you've got your tonal underpainting in you'll have seen that that's kind of how, how it's working. Um, if you've not then this is your chance to kind of make it as it is. I'm going to just start layering this up. So I've got a lovely vibrant bit below. And I'm going to work quite fast with it. Acrylics dry quite fast on the page. 
um, especially with decent paper. So you want to be working quite fast and if you've got a bit of water on your brush then you can start blending the colours together. So you can see I'm just layering up all the different paints, all the different shades that I've got. And if you layer them together, you start to mix in. You put water on your brush or just cleaning it in between colours as well. Really helps. You don't want it too watery, but that was a wee bit watery. And you'll know what feels right when you're putting it on too. Take a wee bit of my lighter one, round about the tops here. got this really light highlight right on top. Well, I say light, it's not it's not white, it's not as white as this one's white because this is just a bit lighter. And then right underneath there's the dark bit like this. And depending on what the lighting setup is, this will always be different. Always just make sure you're looking back to see what's there not guessing what you think should be there. And next up I'm going to go back in with just a kind of solid red in the middle. Get me a bit of a blend going. And a good thing with acrylics is you can just keep leading up. Add in wash my brush. I'm gonna need a new water soon, I think. When we change vegetable, we'll change water. So I'm gonna add in a wee fleck of green just in here because there's a little bit of a reflection. It's probably a wee bit dark, I need to let it dry first. I'm going over the top with a lighter on once it's dry. A lot of this is patience as well, <laughs> not something I've been blessed with. Um, so you do need to let things dry in between if you can. Some of it you don't want it to, some of it you want this kind of smudge coming down, but um, some of it is about kind of letting it dry. There's a slight highlight coming down the side here and a little bit at the top here. So I'm going to stop where I am with that one and we'll come back to it. And I'm going to move on to the other segments now. So this one over on the right hand side is a lot darker. So we're going to go straight in with our dark mix. It's red and brown mixed together. And try not to have any white on your brush when you do this or it'll start to look a bit insipid. It goes dark right the way down. Right, now I'm going to move over to the other side 
and just mark in my dark bits and light bits again. And once you start to take away that initial um, bright red that was under there, it starts to look much more realistic. Put those bits in. And just work your way back and forth looking at where the highlights are. We need to add in lighter bits, darker bits. Now if you go over your carrot, it's okay, um, because we're going to put that one in afterwards anyway. So you're better to go over it and layer it up than have that white glow. Go back in with some white. It's a bit watery. I'll dry my brush off a bit. Check what it's like at the back here as well. There's some little highlights. And the more you go over your highlights, the more it looks, looks real. And you get a wee bit of that a light green, just put a reflection there. There's a wee bit down here as well. Now while I'm on the green, let's go back into the stock. So we'll mix up a darker green. And a lighter green. So my lighter green comes all the way down the middle. Got her big it's a bit wet. The highlight on top here. And on the end. Take my darker one, go right underneath. And a little bit on top. I think I'm quite happy with that at the moment. Um, I will go back in and change some bits as we go along, but I'm going to move on to a different 
object now because we don't want to end up making something look a certain way and then we need to change it all because something else looking totally different. So let's go on and do our broccoli. I'm just going to get some clean water to start off with. Right, so for our broccoli, um, we've got nice clean water. We're going to try mixing a couple of different greens. So we started already just doing the stock on the, the paper anyway. But I'm just going to take two dollops and then we're going to add brown to one. Now this is a sap green, so it's a little bit duller. If you've got like an emerald green or something, you might even want to do the opposite of what we've just done and add a little bit of red in um, and that'll pair it back a little bit again if it's too vibrant. But sap green's got a, an almost a dullness to it anyway. Um, so we don't need to worry too much. A little bit of brown is kind of plenty. Just clean the brush a little bit. Then I'm going to add some white to one of them and get a nice light green going on. Now white makes things quite pastely and insipid, um, which is actually okay because the stalk of the broccoli is a little bit like that. But I'm going to mix up a third green um, and that is just the light green with a little bit yellow in it as well. When you add yellow to something, it just warms it up a wee bit more. So you can see the difference between these two. You've got your pastel green and you've got a wee bit more of a vibrant, warm green with the yellow. So since it's on my brush, I'll start with that then. And you can see those kind of colours coming up the broccoli here. In the stalk, you've got some larger areas. So I'm going to mark them in. A little bit lighter than what's already there. And actually, just adding that in over the top and having it a wee bit more opaque has already added something to the painting. Some little bits shown through in the head as well here. So what you can do is almost just dab it on just now. Dab on where you see it. This is going to help with our texture. So the broccoli to me is really bright over this side and really shadowed over here. I've got a, a cast shadow going on underneath and on the side here is really dark. We've got really nice bright bits sort of popping through right up towards the edge as well. So what you can do is if you just use the top of your brush and almost stipple it on to start off with. And the good thing about this is you can be as abstracted as you want. So if you're not a precise painter, but you like to get a bit of texture in there, this is right up your street. Okay, right, that'll do just now. It's all about layers. so. Layer one done of that colour. We're now going to go in and use the dark one. Now the dark one's going to make the, bro the broccoli really pop here. Uh, so the first thing we'll add in, there's a shadow right here. It's quite dark, so I'm going to add that in, just my dark green. And another one just at the bottom. Some darker bits coming through. So just always looking back at the picture and see, or at the, the still life, the objects, even. Seeing where you see dark bits. And then I'm going to go just in with my normal green on top. Add a wee bit of blend into that. So if you've got a wee bit of a, a wetter brush, you can actually blend some of those colours together. Get it a wee bit smoother. There we go. I want to keep this one quite uh, blocky because the shadow is quite blocky. You 
I'm going to use my smaller brush actually, I think I'm using a bit too big a brush. Um, right, back in with the dark again, I'm going to add in this little leaf that's sticking right out. And then, this is the fun bit, so shadows right in here. Depends how much of this you can see, um, but there's some little stalks coming up. And in here as well. Now we're going to get into the, the head of the broccoli here now, there's some really nice shadows so if you're to look at it more, like squint your eyes at it and see it as a block where the dark bits are um, there's a big dark bit just sort of separating the little florets um, so we're going to mark that in and be quite bold with it just now um, obviously things will change You might already have some of these lines in from your pencil. You might still be able to see some of them through. And then this whole side down here, there's a darkness, so I'm going to add that on. I'm just using little tiny brush strokes um, because these are made up of lots of little tiny, tiny bits. So your brush strokes don't have to be completely smooth. Um, you just want them dotted on, is that the word? Stippled on a little bit. You can see it's starting to have a bit more life to it now. Looks less like a big green blob and we're starting to see the individual florets come through. Um, now, depending on how much you like to use your imagination, feel free to add in a few more, but you don't want to go overboard, so I do always advocate looking at what you're drawing. Um, but if you want to be a bit more bold about it, everyone's got their own style. I'm going to go in with a little bit of just my solid green. Get that in there as well. Um, around the edge. Just looking at where you think you see that green as well. And do the same back with our kind of yellowy warmer green. Um, let's mark that. Brush it a bit wet. You don't want it, you don't want this area being too too wet. You want to have quite solid paint on your brush if you can. So just marking in where the highlights are. The majority of highlights are beside a shadow, and that kind of happens. That's a wee bit of a rule of thumb. So it can help you. Now, I'm marking all these in, but we are going to go over and do a bit more texture on top as well. To make sure I've got some shadows and highlights together. Just as a base. This is almost like a base layer, if you think of it like that. I'm going to leave it like that. I feel like I'm adding too much to it. See, here I am going back in. Um, I feel like I'm adding too much, so I'm going to stop there. 
The main thing you want to try and do with your base layer is make sure you don't have any little gaps around the outside. So if in doubt, cover it with a bit of green. And then we're going to go over and do our texture afterwards. Um, I think we need a wee bit more shadow in here. And just come back to the stock and add them in where I think there's different parts. So I'm going to use my lighter green now um, and try and get some of that shining through on the highlights. I'm not sure, there's some areas I could definitely use the white on, um, but I want to go in with my light green first of all, because I do feel when you look at the paper, because it's shiny, you've definitely got the whitest bit on here rather than on this sort of area. This is probably my lightest bit, so we might go in with a little bit of white there, but let's start off with a light green. We can always build it up if we want to. Um, this is my sort of style I paint in. I like to use lots of different greens together. You might find that you don't like doing that and you like to stick to just a couple and that's okay. Just do what you're comfortable with. So although this is dark down here, there's actually a lightness. And up here as well. And I'm just going into lots of different greens now, layering it up where I see it. Old green around a bit here. Okay. So now I've got all that in, I think I definitely need some white in there in some places. I'm going to go in and put in this bit. It's, oh, my brush is a wee bit light. I'm just going where I see white. There's even some little white bits right underneath here and some that come up. And round the edge as well. I'm going to add in a few little bits in here. This is quite light anyway, so we're going to have some light greens going over the top. Now, for the broccoli head, we're going to get back to a wee bit of stippling. So lots of different shades of green, all sort of dabbed on together. And we want to show that difference between the stock and 
up here as well. So I'm going to have lots of dark bits going around this side and lots of lighter bits up here. Um, so yeah, you're just going to dab into your paint, trying to as dry a brush as you can as well. You might even want to dry it off again. Um, once you've got a little bit of paint on it, that's called dry brushing. Um, we're just going to dab on and keep looking back, try not to just guess where it's all going, like definitely see where there's darker areas and lighter areas. Um, but you've got that lovely underpainting done now. Which is going to shine through, so even when you're dabbing on your light areas on top of the dark, it's going to look really good. You might have some going over the top of the white one as well, the white highlights. And when you do that, it just makes it shine. Takes away the stark white, and makes the green shine up. It's all a layering game. <laughs> I wouldn't worry too much about cleaning your brush in between. Um, sometimes it's nice to have little hints of different greens as you're dabbing it on. It depends what kind of area you're in, how controlled you want to be with it. Um, if you've got a kind of rougher texture brush, then this will work even better. I'm using quite a nice brush just now, so um, it's going on a lot softer. Right, I'm going to stop there um, for now because I might end up having to come back to it at some point depending on the sort of texture of everything else. We're going to move on to the carrot now. Um, so you're going to have to mix up some oranges. I need a little bit more yellow paint and I'm going to clean my water as well just so that it's nice and clear for, um, for the oranges. So let's start back in a second. Okay, let's get on with working in where our carrot's going to go. The first thing I want to do is, I've realised my carrot's a wee bit narrow, so I'm going to bring it down a little tiny bit when I go. Um, but that's a good thing about colour blocking sometimes, it shows you where things need to go. So let's mix a couple of different oranges. So we started with this orange previously when we were colour blocking in. Um, so I'm going to add a wee bit more yellow to it and just see where that gets to. Add a little bit of water as well if it's not moving as well. That's quite nice. Right, I'll keep that there. Second thing I'm going to do is mix another one just up here, but we're going to add a bit of white in as well. Um, mix my yellow and white and then just take a wee touch of red because you only need a wee tiny bit take more white yellow in as well it's a, it becomes like the start of flesh tones um, if you get too much white in it just because it goes kind of pastely And you just need a wee bit more yellow. There we go. Quite happy with that just now. I think that's quite similar to our carrot shade. Um, yeah, so we've got our light orange, we've got a darker orange, and then we might go in with a few different kind of shades as well. There's some, some white bits shown through, there's some little brownie bits, um, but overall it's quite a light carrot. 
um, we've got our initial orange in there from the colour block as well. And the first thing I'm doing is just going over the top with this lighter orange. And bring it down a wee bit like I said. Right here. I'm going to take my smaller brush and we're going to go into the darker orange um, and just marking in where that is. It needs to be a wee bit darker to be honest. Get more red in there. There we go. Just bring it out. So if you feel your orange is too vibrant, you want to dull it down, you go for what is opposite in the colour wheel, which is blue. So you can try adding a wee bit of blue to it if you feel like it's just looking too vibrant. I do feel mine's is a wee bit vibrant. I've got a much duller orange now. So I can now go in and put in some darker bits. It depends what style you want your pictures to be in. If you want it to be really vibrant, then don't bother adding in any blues or anything. Go for it. Have it really bold. Um, but if you're going for more realistic, then definitely, definitely helps. my lighter one and I'm going in the green of the carrot so all the little lines come across like this so you can do that with your brush if you've got a smaller brush just start doing that and it gets the texture in there and a wee bit my shadows in where I see them. Um, this is definitely a lot brighter than what my carrot is in real life but I'm, I'm reluctant to change it because I quite like the vibrancy of it. Like I mentioned before, I love colour so I like things looking really bold. Um, I'd rather have the colour shining through than it to be too dull. As long as you're trying to get those textures, using your brush, different colours all over the top of one another, or different shades of the colour even. I've still got a little line showing through from my pencil. Um, I'm the kind of person that embraces that. I quite like seeing pencil marks show through, but if you don't like that at all, just a few more layers of paint will definitely cover that over. I'm going to just use white with a wee bit of that orange in it and just get this a little bit lighter up the top where the light is shining. As you can see, my messy palette, I just end up mixing all the colours together till I get what I'm looking for. Um, hopefully yours is a little bit tidier. Um, and then we've got a little brown bit just in here where it probably was green at one point. 
Um, but I'm going to just keep my brush still with a bit of orange on it and just go into my brown. And then it's still got a hint of the colour. And just mark that in. You can go really detailed with this or you can just be quite rough. Um, just having that brown bit in just shows where the stock is. Add a wee bit of white on the end bit, like that. And then once that's dry, I'm actually going to tidy up a little bit of the brown bit there. But I'll let it dry in first. Um, right, so while we're waiting on that dry drying, let's go on to our background again. Um, so background is our light blue. I'll wash my brush. I'll go back in with a big brush. And we're going to try and get some of the little darker bits, lighter bits of the blue as well in there. Um, red doesn't like coming off your brush. It takes a little while. Okay, so your blue, to get this sort of blue background, I would recommend putting a wee bit of the orange maybe in the blue because it's opposite in the colour wheel, it'll just paint it back a little bit. Um, but you don't have to if you don't want to. If you quite like this baby blue you've got going on here, this pastel blue, um, then that's all right as well. That can, that can work. Um, but I'm gonna add a little bit of orange in. If you add too much in, it could go brown. Um, it could go green. So just be careful, just add a little bit at a time. And then we're going to add our big dollop of white. Go. So that's dulled that blue down quite a lot. Probably added too much white now, going to add a bit more blue back in. There we go. That's the kind of colour I was looking for. Um, now, let's get this on the page. I'm going to add a dollop of water to it, um, just so that it goes a little bit further. You don't want too much or it'll end up like a watercolour um, and the paint won't stick together, it'll crack and things. So just a little bit of water. But I do feel this is a kind of nicer shade shining through. Just a little bit duller, plus vibrant fruit is going to make the fruit stand out more. And I'm just marking it in. So you can leave the areas, there's a big cast shadow um, behind the paper. So you can almost leave those in. We want to make sure we've got this bit round our broccoli a lot darker. We've got this bit behind the paper and in the middle here as well, really dark. Um, and the rest of it is probably close to this colour we've mixed. We'll have some light bits and dark bits as well, like where the, the fabric's falling behind. Um, but just now, I'm just going to try and get the main bit of colour on. Get it looking more even. And it's important to do this before you put your final touches on your fruit because you don't want to end up having to go round out with a tiny, tiny brush. It's a bit like decorating your room. Try and do your edges and blend it all out. And 
and then if you do cut in too far into your your veg it's fine you've still got more fine tuning to do with that anyway so as you go along if you want to add in some bits that are a bit whiter you can while the paint's still wet um, you can sort of add in where these lighter sections are coming down see so I've gone into the stock of my paper a little bit I'd be really annoyed if I was finished that now <laughs> A big light bit coming down here. So this is totally up to you how much detail you go into with your your blues. Um, I'm not one to be mega detailed with my backgrounds for a still life because I want my fruits to pop out. Um, but if you do prefer a more detailed and going through every little crease. It will still it'll look amazing. I just like to have a little hint of it. Right, if you're making it a little bit darker, you can add a, a burnt umber into your blue mix. Just make sure you've got enough blue in there as well, um, otherwise it'll go light brown colour. And then you can need to add a wee bit more of each. Not quite dark enough. I match up what your shadows look like. The, the shadows really are quite dark. Um, I was right down the back here in the middle.
I'm just looking at where all my shadows are now. The carrot's gone right the way underneath, apart from where the bit of material goes up. side as well. And you can add in as much of this darkness as you like, um, coming down the back of things. Um, you can have some more highlights coming through. As I said before, you've normally got a highlight next to a shadow. Um, so you can start working those in a little bit. I tend to trim all my paintings as well, which is why I've just like kind of gone a bit wide with everything. Um, you can use masking tape to kind of cut it all off, or you can just cut it at the end, which I quite like doing. Um, right, that's going to do me for my background just now. Um, feel free to keep adding some stuff in. But at the moment, what I just want to do now is just finish off the painting um, by going round and adding in all little details anywhere my background seeped in as well. Um, then you can do that. Some of my paints dried in, in my palette, so I might have to remix a few things. But it's all good practice. Um, if you've got a scrap sheet of paper there as well, you can always have a little trial on the paper first, just to check. So, you know, if I'm going to use that red, yeah, that's quite similar. There we go.
just going to go over some of my highlights again just to finish off the paper you can go really bold with them or you can just almost let them fade in a little bit however stylized you want to be with it So your green for your broccoli, just make sure there's not too solid a line around the outside. Um, after doing your background you might find it looks a bit solid. So just go back in and make sure you've got all your little flority bits shining through. Just dabbing it on again. Um, if you want to add in these sort of brownier bits in the um, broccoli, I've said broccoli so many times and forgot the word there, then you can do. Um, or you can just sort of leave it as it is. I'm just going to add in a couple of little darker areas where they are. Again, depends how much detail you want in there. And last thing I'm going to do is just touch up any little bits of the carrot there. Mm. Just try and get that colour again. It's always hard remixing your colours. I'm just going over it, I put in the white highlights, but I'm just putting a wee bit of orange over the top just so not quite so bright because I want the, the paper to really pop. Um, one little bit I just forgot about was the stock of the paper, um, which has got a wee bit of background over it as well. So I'm just going to go back in with my darks around the outside there. too much of my brush there. there go. I quite like leave I want to kind of leave that white highlight there because the paper's so shiny I want it to look shiny um, whereas everything else is quite matte. This is a wee bit shiny but um the carrot especially, I want that to sort of 
dull back a little bit and have the pepper looking really bold. Um, yeah, so I could carry on forever, just adding lots of bits and getting my background looking good and um, any other wee extras I want to put in. But I'm going to stop there. Please do carry on and add in as many little bits as you need to to get it looking good. Um, and yeah, thanks very much for joining. Thanks for joining me today doing our acrylic painting of our still life with vegetables. Um, I've trimmed mine down so that it's all neat and tidy at the edges. Um, I've still got a couple more little details to add on, but I'll do that afterwards. Um, I hope you've enjoyed and I will see you next week. <laughs>